my name is Joe and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop. I do a lot of Z-axis work on my milling machine with the knee. Uh, I have a tendency when I'm uh, doing things like chamfering or drilling to depth I'll set the job up so that I bring the quill down to full extension and put the knee where I need it so whatever feature I'm making is at the right depth. So I, I'm cranking that handle an awful lot or running the power feed an awful lot and I often need to come back to a pre-selected reference point. Right now that means counting the turns on the handle a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and sometimes 12 and 15 and 17 if you're changing over from let's say a spotting drill to uh, a reamer, a 3 quarter inch reamer that's 8 inches long uh, you, you might have a wide range of vertical travel. For as long as I've owned the mill I've wished that I had a z-axis uh, digital readout so recently I bought a cheap one, uh, $40 or so uh, on eBay and I'm going to install that on my tree milling machine and bring you along for the ride. So let's first take a look at what I bought and then we'll go over to the side of the milling machine and see if we can figure out a way to install it. Here's the readout, built like a digital caliper, 24 inch range, which is more than I need, but they say in the comments that this can be cut, so I'll cut it to length. Uh, fairly simple one, not many functions, but uh, it does have up and down, don't know how well you can see that. should be incrementing and it feels fairly smooth uh, it's got absolute and zero it's got a set it's got inch and millimeters uh, it reads out in decibel and in fractions right now we're setting on 85 128 of an inch uh, over here uh, which is kind of neat I guess pretty well used to doing work in decimal that that's handy uh, I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this and uh, made a little piece of hardware here that we'll look at in a minute uh, this came with a bare minimum of stuff uh, it did came, come with a pair of batteries uh, this is a bracket to hang the readout on and these, uh, th this is for the other end, it, uh, I, I took that off uh, to, in preparation for cutting. Uh, it comes with these two brackets and two screws, which are not enough. There's one to go on here, there should be a couple for this bracket uh, well maybe not I guess two two screws two screws is enough but just barely and no instructions uh, but of course uh, anyone who is interested in installing one of these is probably technically qualified to figure this out for themselves so there's not really that much need for instructions. Just figure out what you're going to do, uh, what brackets you're going to either use or make for your own application and just go for it. Uh, my main concern is that there's no uh, wiggle room in this. Uh, most digital readouts have, I don't know, 20 or 30 thousandths of an inch of 
play of, of tolerance allowed in the assembly. The reed head is spring-loaded onto the glass scale or onto the magnetic scale in, in such a way that you don't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, with this thing, you got to be pretty close. Uh, again, it's built just like a digital caliper, but with a digital caliper, uh, the, the moving pieces are uh, uh, only uh, only need to be stationary in relation to each other. You you can you hold it by hand on whatever you're going to, to measure, uh, so there, there's not an issue with the other end being restrained. And here we're going to have both ends restrained by different hardware, so that means the the, the top and bottom positions have to be pretty darn close to parallel the travel of the table and you don't get much wiggle room for attaching the the reed head e either that has to be uh, secured in my case to the knee itself this is going to be secured to the casting of the of the uh, the base of the mill and this will be secured to the knee that attachment has to be solid enough that there's no play in it, otherwise you lose your reference, uh, you, you, you have backlash in it, uh, yet at the same time, it, it's got to, you, you, it has to be able to follow the knee without twisting and turning and trying to rack this thing out of shape. So that, that's going to be a little touchy, we'll have, to, we'll have to see how well things work there. Here's the idea. Uh, the table is all the way to the bottom of the, uh, or the knee is all the way to the bottom of the travel. This is the limit switch mechanism for the power feed. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of, of that. Uh, this installs by convention so that Z goes minus as the knee goes up. The closer to the tool, the more minus. So I uh, have fabricated this bracket to bolt on using the bolts that hold the limit switch. I can come off of the bottom of this, uh, probably with a welded uh, bracket to uh, pick up the reed head. So I want the bottom of this, uh, I, I want to give, uh, I say, a half an inch of extra travel at the bottom. So I'm, I'm going to just arbitrarily, say this might even be an inch extra, just arbitrarily pick a, a distance that uh, lets me get uh, well, uh, let, lets me have travel well below the lowest limit so that I'm not pushing things on this uh, uh, scale because I have plenty to work with and I want to get it back far enough so that it is on the flat part of the casting here I think I can rely on that to be relatively parallel top and bottom uh, at that point uh, this is going to be really awkward for me to do in video at the same time because I can't really get out of the way of the camera so I'm going to drill some holes, uh, do a little fabrication, and then we'll get back to you when I've got uh, something more to show. I can see one thing on this readout head that's going to have to change. It comes with magnets so you can stick it to any metal surface on your machine, and they be bleed right through to the front. So the display is picking up uh, chips, uh, ferrous chips on the front. Uh, I, I personally do not like magnetized stuff anywhere near my machine tools. I don't have uh, a magnetic strip in the lid of my toolbox for my scales because I learned very early on that if your scale is magnetized, you got chips all over it. Uh, if your screwdriver is magnetized, uh, I'm always fighting magnetism, so 
I'm going to remove those. Uh, probably going to have to take it apart. There's four screws in the corners of the case and uh, push those out from the back side uh, or from the inside of the back lid. Uh, regardless, those magnets are going away. The magnets are 12 millimeter in diameter by about a millimeter and a half thick, uh, just under half inch by a sixteenth. Uh, it's secured with hot melt glue. They have to go out toward the inside of the lid. The, this, this hole is uh, smaller than the pocket. Uh, so I punched them out, uh, turned up a couple of bits of brass rod and glued them back in with hot melt glue, same as the uh, magnets were glued. So now I can put this back together and it won't attract chips. I've been doing <coughs> some head scratching and some uh, slightly boring machine work. I might have something a little interesting coming up here. Uh, I've drilled and tapped a couple of quarter twenty holes in this bracket I had made. Cut up some aluminum pieces. This is a standoff about an inch and a half thick by an inch and a half wide. Uh, well, three quarter thick by inch and a half. Uh, drilled and tapped counterboard. Uh, I shouldn't say tapped. Drilled and counterboard uh, this piece. How close am I? There we go. Uh, I'm going to bolt this on to this bracket. For the uh, travel switch, the limit switch on the uh, power feed. This is not tremendously sturdy. Well, it's pretty fair. Okay, so that should clear here. That slides by without any issue. And it's at about the right height. I've made, I've made up a little bit of, of uh, tool steel. 3 8 diameter tool steel. Can I focus some on? Uh, drilled and tapped for 832. Going to screw this onto the bracket that's attached to the back of the reed head. scratching my head about. I want an attachment between here and here that is not fixed. Uh, this, this is pretty true from top to bottom within a couple of thousandths on the uh, wide side of the beam. And it stays within maybe five or ten thousandths going this way, but this is pretty limber. I don't know if you can see it in there, but I can flex this back and forth easily a half an inch, or an eighth of an inch with a bare amount of pressure. So I want to cut a notch in here. Such that the bottom of the notch will ride against the bottom of this bit of dowel, a bit of rod I just bolted on here. At the top I'm going to mount this spring so that it has a significant amount of tension. Can we see that? Focus. There we go. Well, this is a spring. Uh, what I have in here is a 632 uh, machine screw to fasten it with. I was able to get that to drop down through uh, the hole in the top of the spring. Uh, this is a pretty stout spring. I'm going to say that takes maybe 
I don't know, I'll measure, but I think five or six pounds of pressure to close that spring up. I want to set that up so it has a good amount of pressure on the top of that dowel so that between the spring pressure here and the notch on the bottom it'll carry that dowel up and down as this bracket travels. That'll give a, a solid, I shouldn't say solid, a positive connection between this bracket and the reed head that is not fixed. It'll be fixed in the z-axis but it is not fixed in the x or the y. It's floating under the tension of this spring. So that will account, allow for motion in either direction here while constraining this in the vertical. So let's go to the milling machine, see if we can make this happen. I'm centered up on the jaws of the vise on the workpiece. I got a half inch end mill in here. I'm going to go uh, about five eighths of an inch deep, uh, not from center, but overall depth of the cut. Uh, I figure about 700 thousandths is what I need to accommodate the 3 8 inch dowel pin and uh, three, about 325 thousandths for the compressed length of the spring. That leaves it pretty, pretty tight but it still has a sixteenth of an inch or so of collapse. Uh, so let's do this. rough that out to within about ten thousandths and uh, then went around with a uh, slow speed climb cut to get a better finish. Let me go deburr this. 
I'm centered up again on the thickness of this piece. I bolted this back together long enough to determine that I was looking for uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch back for the center line of the dowel uh, on the bracket on the reed head. So I will uh, spot drill this large enough to act as a, as a chamfer or countersink for the tap hole. Then I will drill through uh, with a number 36 for uh, 632 thread. Then I'm going to turn it over, use the drill bit to find that hole again, and drill the bottom through uh, with an eighth inch bit to provide clearance for the uh, uh, Allen wrench, the hex wrench, to tighten that screw. Got my Jim, Jim Dudman oil cup here. see how well my plan works. The idea is that I should be able to get in here with the spring, run the Allen wrench in here, screw that into the bottom of the spring, Ugly. And should be able to get three eighths of an inch into here. Probably have to squeeze the spring a bit as I'm doing it. But there it goes. I think that's going to work. Let me climb down here on my hands and knees again and put this together for what could possibly be the last time. There it is, assembled, and seem, seems to be doing the job. Up, down, and let's see if we can get the display into the picture. There's about as close to a hundred as I can see on the display on the dial. Sorry for the awkwardness here. The display on the camera is upside down and I, it's hard to uh, get my relative motion figured out. So let's go 100 on the dial. Another 100 on the dial. And there's 200. It just must be, uh, it's dark under here. That doesn't help where I'm trying to look at the dial. 299, that's awfully close. Three ninety nine. Now this is not a surface grinder where I'm after tenths accuracy on the Z axis. If I can get plus or minus a thousandth when I come back up and down, uh, I, I'm going to be really happy with that. Back to zero. Of course with the backlash I have to go down below and then come back up. That ought to be about, about another, another turn on the handle. Yeah, 
and back to zero. That's uh, uh, certainly acceptable. Uh, I, that, that's going to be fine. Now, now I have to figure out uh, a mount uh, for this to keep it in a convenient location and I think probably a hinged cover to uh, let down over the top of this uh, uh, between readings to uh, keep oil and chips off the display. I'll think about that and uh, then we'll come finish up. Typically the digital readout itself is mounted high and to the right of the machine for this Z prime readout it seemed to me to make sense to have it down close to the Z axis Z prime axis control uh, the knee control uh, so uh, here's what I've come up with I've drilled and tapped a couple of holes in the uh, saddle uh, being careful to stop short of the parting lines on uh, uh, for the uh, uh, gib adjustment uh, this will bolt on to here uh, this is a plastic base supplied with the uh, readout head uh, there's a little uh, uh, keyhole feature on here and that interlocks in here uh, there's nothing in the original uh, mating features to keep that on uh, so you could just tap it with your hand and it would pop right off uh, so here's uh, my approach to that uh, got a piece of half by three quarter aluminum stock here. Let's see if I can get this on in the right direction. This goes on here and is secured with a flathead screw like so. Let's uh, run a fastener through here to make sure I get get this centered up properly. This will be the final installation, so I'm going to go ahead and do that fairly tight. Now, that piece of stock locks the readout head in place. It cannot come off of, of that uh, uh, keyhole feature. And then we'll mount this with a couple of quarter 28 fasteners. <clears throat> into the tapped holes in the knee and that <clears throat> that's pretty rigid and secure but I've already got dust and chips on there I didn't like that so here's a standard spring-loaded cabinet hinge what they call sort of self-closing uh, not slow closing but it, there's a snap action to keep it in place so I cut out a piece of aluminum stock drilled and tapped it for 1030 or 632 brass flathead screws we take a couple of 632 allen fasteners into tapped holes in the aluminum stock there and we have a cover easy to open easy to get out the 
control to turn it on and off to zero. Flip it down. Chips and oil. Uh, general debris in the air in the shop or uh, sh uh, shed off of the surface. Uh, these are brass screws into aluminum, uh, so neither material is very hard. Can't get a whole lot of torque on that, so I did Loctite those uh, in hopes of keeping them in place. But that uh, looks pretty good to me. It's out of the way. It doesn't interfere with anything I need to do with the machine in here. Works well. Let's back up a little bit and see that in context. So here's here's the Z handle. Here's the Z power feed, and that's right on top. So when I'm working the power feed or cranking the handle, uh, it's right where I'm looking. Very convenient. <clears throat> My last issue is to protect the scale itself. Here's what I came up with for a guard. piece of scrap angle iron long enough with a couple of angle iron clips cut off and welded. Just a good heavy tack weld in each corner both ends long enough to span the full uh, length top and bottom. Uh, drilled some quarter inch holes and tapped them quarter twenty in the uh, base of the mill. Go bolt this on, we'll be done. Just a wee bit tricky getting my fingers in here with the Allen head screw to get it on the end. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Holes already drilled and tapped. We hope in the right location. Now this one will be a little harder, I think, to get up in here. Now I can bang up against that all I want, and I'm not going to hurt it. Wonderful. There's another job finished. That adds a good deal of functionality to the mill, especially considering uh, the way I use it. I'm up and down on that Z prime axis, the knee uh, travel uh, quite a bit. So I'm real happy to have that done. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll comment. I hope you'll come back and visit the shop again. We really enjoy living in the Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern California. We're at about 3,500 feet. Here's a little herd of 11 deer in the field across the road from our house. Uh, these guys are, uh, oh, no more than 100 feet from the house. Uh, it's, we, we see uh, this group pretty often. <clears throat> Out in the distance here, there's, there's a pair of sandhill cranes. Uh, we are hoping that they will nest in that meadow. They usually have two young, and usually one or both of them uh, falls to predators, uh, but we always <laughs> keep our hope, hopes up for the pairs that we see, the breeding pairs. Uh, this is just so nice to be able to look out your front door, literally, and see this kind of a view. It's 
just a really great place to live.